Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to write a vertical jump training program. I just wrote a 12 week program with three different phases in it. We're gonna talk about the structure of how to do that, what exercises to include in your program, so that way you don't just know what exercises to do, but also how to strategically put them together and make progress from week to week and month to month. So we're gonna start off actually towards the weight side of this gym where we're going to go into some more strength training. Phase one is going to be more of a hypertrophy and plyometric training phase. For most athletes in this type of phase, I recommend some weightlifting combined with some plyometric moves. For the plyometric moves, they're gonna be a bit more power focused, so things like loaded jumps. So we're gonna show you here, set up at the squat rack, how we might do something like a front squat and a dumbbell loaded jump. So, for our dumbbell loaded jump, we're typically gonna load around 10% body weight, at most 15% body weight. I include loaded jumps in phase one because this is, again, more of a strength and hypertrophy focused phase of training. If you're just starting out and you feel like these are too intense for you, you may need to start in more of a beginner program with things like drop freezes where you're pausing and holding the landing and uh, things like that. But if you're a moderate to well-trained athlete, you've been doing some jumping, you maybe play you know, basketball a couple times a week or something like that, you can already handle it, then this might be a good exercise to start with in phase one for you when you're building up, again, hypertrophy and plyometrics. So, for dumbbell jumps, we're gonna hold about 10, maybe 15% body weight in our hands combined total, and then we're gonna do jumps, typically very low reps. The way that I program these in my vertical jump program is four sets of five. So five reps, we're gonna start kinda in the ball of the foot, we're gonna drop down, explode up, land, hold for a second, and then go again. So these aren't continuous, it's just like this. Drop, jump, pause for a few seconds, drop, jump. What we don't wanna see is collapsing too far into these. This isn't a full squat. We're only going to about a quarter squat, and then we're exploding up. When we're doing jumping in sport, that's about the same range of motion we should expect to use. Now, early in your vertical jump program, within that first four weeks of vertical jump training, we wanna be accommodating to a bunch of strength training with full range of motion as well. This could be things like back squats, front squats, leg press. One that I use in my full 12 week vertical jump program is the front squat. The point here is to build strength through full range of motion so that way we can then translate that to more powerful explosive movements, especially in phase two and three. Don't skip phase one where you're building strength. This is really important. It sets the foundation for power. All right, this is a good time to talk about program structure. So as we head back over here, we need to think about what days of the week are we going to be training power and plyometrics versus conditioning versus mobility. And the way that I programmed my vertical jump program, and you can copy this as well, Monday and Thursday are primary lower body power focused days. So these are the days where we're gonna be doing exercises like loaded jumps, the front squat that we talked about, and the, they're gonna be the hardest lower body training days. We're keeping those the farthest apart on Monday and Thursday. For our Tuesday session, that's a conditioning focused day. These are gonna be things like circuits where you're starting every minute on the minute and doing say 20 to 40 seconds of work. Now this type of conditioning is aerobic slash anaerobic. It's gonna essentially help us build the conditioning so that way we can jump many times throughout a long basketball game without losing power. Because the ability to maximize our vertical jump for just one jump is only one aspect of fitness. We also need to be able to train repeated jumps. Essentially, you just wanna pick about three or four different things that you want to build conditioning with and do them on, off, on, off for a about 30 to 40 minute total training session. Now that's our Tuesday session, but for our Wednesday training session, I incorporated an upper body optional day here. A lot of people do wanna build their upper body strength and hypertrophy as well. So I just included that on Wednesday, as well as what you'll see on Saturday. So we have Monday, Thursday, primary lower body training days, Tuesday, conditioning focused, Wednesday, upper body, and then on Friday, we have a mobility focused day. That could include things like working on hip controlled articular rotations, building our ankle dorsiflexion range of motion up, working on Turkish get ups or more functional exercises. We wanna include this somewhere in the program at least once a week to ensure that we're making progress on our mobility as well as our strength and power.
And then lastly, I like to include a Saturday training session to wrap everything up. This is a full body training session that can have a little bit of plyometric work, a little bit of upper body and lower body strength work, and some mobility work as well. This is whatever we need from the rest of the week that we didn't get enough of, all put into that Saturday session. Now, what you can probably see from the structure of this program is with Wednesday being upper body and with Saturday being full body, if you really needed to, you could trim this program down and make it just two or three days a week. But if you want to, you can make it a full six day a week program and do every single training session. So you can kind of dial up or dial back based on the athlete's needs. When you're writing your own program, you might have to think about how often you are training now. And you don't want to be too ambitious and train every day if you're only training once or twice a week now. Try to focus on keeping it to what you can actually reasonably stick with long term. Okay, so now let's talk about phase two. We just did four weeks of hypertrophy focused training with some plyometrics, but as we get into phase two, that's when we wanna really ramp up our plyometrics, ramp up our strength work, and dial down the, the hypertrophy volume. So we're not gonna be doing quite as much. We're not gonna be doing sets of 10 or 12 or 14 on leg press and squats. We're gonna dial that back to sets of six to eight reps of most of our strength exercises. Again, the actual exercises, there's a ton of options you can choose. Some ones that I like are front squats, trap bar deadlifts, things like that. But again, you can choose the individual exercises that fit the needs of this program. The key though is for the strength and power phase, you can keep the structure the same. You're still keeping your Monday, Thursday primary session, your Tuesday conditioning work, your Friday mobility work. But overall, our reps are going down a little bit and our intensity is going up. So we're dialing up the intensity of the plyometrics. We're dialing up the intensity of the strength training with fewer reps. So what types of plyometrics should we include in the second phase as we're dialing up? So in the first phase, we had some loaded jumps, but we also had some basic movements where we're just doing like box jumps and double leg movements. In the second phase, we can start to work into some single leg movements, such as a single leg lateral barrier hop. So for that one, for example, you might be hopping back and forth on one leg, up and over a barrier. We might actually start with sticking the landing here on these jumps. And then over time, we can progress to doing counter movement jumps where we're actually back and forth and back and forth and more explosive and powerful. We can also work into some depth jumps, either in phase two or phase three, depending on how advanced you are and how much you can handle these. Depth jumps are where we step off of a box and we absorb the ground contact force and then jump up again. I, again, like to have that foundation of strength with the loaded jumps and with the squats in phase one before working into depth jumps and things like that in phase two and three. Phase three is going to be our most intense and most specific to vertical jump. So hopefully you're testing vertical jump weekly. This is what I typically recommend is testing it at the start of every week. Uh, if you have a Vertec in your garage or something, then that's awesome. You could te test it or at your gym, but most people don't. Another test that you can do is actually just grabbing chalk or a piece of tape and then jumping against the wall. Reach as high as you can, put the piece of tape on the wall, and then put a piece of tape on your finger, jump, touch that tape as high as you can, and measure the difference between where you can reach to and where you can jump to. Whatever way you're going to test, you want to be consistent every week and then just know that most of your results you'll see in phase two and three. Phase one, again, is to set that foundation, but it usually takes about four weeks to start seeing results in improving your vertical jump. But again, phase three is most specific here. So all of your exercise selection should be geared towards vertical jump. So we're not doing as many loaded jumps. We're actually gonna unload or even do band assisted jumps in this phase of training. We're doing the shortest ground contact time, the least amount of weight for these exercises to really tax the nervous system and make sure that we're really get, being explosive here and getting the most specific training for our vertical jump. You can't be in this phase forever. A lot of people think that you can, but eventually if you spend too much time in this phase, you'll plateau. We really want this to be about four weeks in this phase where we're really selling out on those vertical jump gains before you cycle back to more of a hypertrophy phase or at least a strength phase. Okay, so to recap here, a few things to remember when you're writing a vertical jump program. We can't stick with one specific training type forever because we'll make progress initially, but then we'll plateau. So we want to have phases of training, some phases of training where we're a bit higher volume, building hypertrophy and strength, and then some phases of training where we're doing more power and vertical jump specific plyometrics. A good rule of thumb is about four weeks on hypertrophy and strength work, followed by eight weeks on power and plyometric work. If you guys do wanna follow the full movement system 12 week vertical jump program, you can click the link in the description below and it'll take you there. That program will add to your training calendar in Train Heroic. So you can just open the app whenever you get to the gym and have your workouts all programmed for you. I know a bunch of you guys have already signed up for that and are starting to see progress. 
Make sure you're consistent with those workouts. Track your vertical jump each week to make sure you're seeing the progress. And you should expect to see up to a one to two inch vertical jump improvement each month of training. Hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. Subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks.